Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is Radio Free Mormon on the air, broadcasting behind enemy lines. Tonight's episode, Jen Camp versus John DeLynn, the complete audio recording of the anti-stalking hearing. Now, for a little bit of background on what's been going on, as most of you know, Jen Camp was for approximately eight months employed by the Open Stories Foundation and appeared from time to time as a co-host with John DeLynn on his Mormon Stories podcast. That all came to an end in September of 2023 when Jen Camp was fired from her employment at the Open Stories Foundation. Making a long story short, on January 17th, 2023, Jen Camp filed a lawsuit against John DeLynn and the members of the Board of Directors of the Open Stories Foundation. That lawsuit was filed in Utah. On February 7th, 2023, John DeLynn and the Board of Directors filed their countersuit against Jen Camp. One week after John DeLynn and the Board of Directors filed their countersuit against Jen Camp, Jen Camp went to the 3rd Judicial District Court for the State of Utah and obtained an ex parte temporary anti-stalking order against John DeLynn. Now, what that means is she went to court without notifying John DeLynn or anybody else, and the law provides for this in most states. She went to court, obtained a temporary order based on what she and she alone told the judge in that hearing, and that order was then served on John DeLynn. Because it is a temporary order, obtained ex parte, which means without the other party present, only one party was present, and that was Jen Camp. Because it is an ex parte order, John DeLynn has the ability to demand a full hearing on the issue, which he did, and that hearing was held in front of Judge Coral Sanchez on March 7, 2023. The hearing, although it was originally scheduled to take only two hours, ended up being a little over four hours long. A number of months ago, I obtained a copy of the order that the judge issued at the end of the hearing denying Jen Camp's request for a permanent order and revoking the temporary order that had been issued. But it is not until today and after two requests of the clerk's office that I have obtained a copy of the audio of the entire hearing, which is what I intend to play for you today on this episode of Radio Free Mormon. I think this will be very interesting because not only is it a hearing on Jen Camp's petition for an anti-stalking order against John DeLynn, it also gives us a glimpse, and perhaps even more than a glimpse, into the civil lawsuit that is going on now behind the scenes as it's working its way through the court system. So here now, for your listening pleasure, is the full audio of the hearing held March 7th, 2023, at which Jen Camp lost her petition to have a permanent anti-stalking order placed upon John DeLynn. Play the tape. All right, we're on the record in case 2309010 The petitioner is Jennifer Ruth Camp. The respondent is John uh, Delan, sir, is that how you pronounce your name, Delan? Delin. Delin, okay, thank you. Uh, Council on to your appearances. Good morning, Your Honor. Kimberly Washburn here on behalf of the petitioner, uh, Jennifer Camp, who is also present, um, as is her husband, who is a protected person on the protective, on the, excuse me, stocking injunction. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, good morning. Jennifer Tomshock and Shane Godis on behalf of the respondent, Mr. John DeLynn, who's also present in the courtroom. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. So uh, we're set for two hours, so I'm going to give each uh, side an hour to uh, present whatever evidence they want the court to consider. I did uh, receive uh, the exhibits that were emailed uh, to the court. Uh, uh, Since the respondent uh, filed his request for a hearing within the 10 days, then uh, the burden is on the petitioner um, to show by a preponderance of the evidence that um, that uh, stalking of the petitioner by the respondent has occurred. Uh, so uh, let's start um, with the uh, petitioner. Thank Any you. witnesses? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Jennifer? I will, I will call uh, Ms. Camp to the, to the stand. Uh, Ms. Camp, will you approach so that our uh, Folks, can swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And, and Your Honor, is it your preference to have a copy of any documents we may refer to? If you have a courtesy copy, I, I really appreciate that. May I approach? Yes, please. Or you can just go to the bailiff. Okay. 
Your Honor. Okay. And then, uh, Counsel, do you have exhibits for the <coughs> or these? Do you have like hard copies of exhibits that you're going to move to introduce for like, Dr. Yeah, uh, Carlo Keith? Or is it just. They, they will be the ones that, that the witness is looking at. Ms. Kemp is referring to? Okay. okay. Your Honor, yeah. I'd just like to, like to briefly note for the court that we were told that we were to exchange any evidence that was not already exchanged yesterday. And um, looking through these exhibits, most of them are ones that have not been previously provided to us. Uh, I, I don't recall getting any information about uh, an order to exchange evidence. Um, however, the majority of the information, even if it is broken out, was attached to her petition for a stalking injunction, which is included in this binder as Exhibit D. There's nothing new. Oh, with the exception of Exhibit... Exhibits A and B have never been provided. Exhibit E. This matter. I apologize. Let me just speak over here. Uh, Council, would you like a few minutes to review those exhibits? Or I'd really like to move forward with the hearing today, uh, but if you need a little, a, a few minutes to review those, I can certainly accommodate that. Why, why don't we go ahead with her questioning, but maybe give me some time between when uh, before I cross her, so that I can look through these more carefully. Yes, the court will do that. Thank you. Go ahead, Council. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, uh, Mrs. Camp. Can you please tell us your name? Yes, Jennifer Ruth Camp. And oh, that's one to step on. <laughs> Can I move this forward just a hair? Yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> I'll trip. It'll be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, can you spell your last name for the record? Yeah, K A M P. Okay, and can you tell me generally why you are here today? Yes, I placed a stalking protection order against John Dillon um, because I started to be fearful at the length he was going to contact me and um, I guess um, smear my name. Okay. And I started to fear. Okay, so um, is the, the gentleman that you referred to, is he here today? Yes. Okay. And where is he? Can you point him out to us? The one on the right. Okay, so is he, he's sitting here at council table. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and a blue tie. Two blue ties. Long jacket. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, can you tell us how it is that you know Mr. DeLynn? Yes. Um, I worked at the Open Stories Foundation, which is uh, the foundation that. Um, his podcast is under. Oh, and what did you say the name of the, the company was? Open Stories Foundation. Open Stories Foundation. Mm -hmm. Is he the founder of that? Yes, I believe so. Okay, <laughs> and is he the, the main individual who, um, you said they do podcasts? Yes. Is he the main individual who does podcasts? Yes. Okay, and what is the, the subject matter of his pod podcast generally? Um, it's for the ex-Mormon or post-Mormon community. Okay. Um, and I think you said you became employed by mm -hmm. Open Stories Foundation? Yes. <laughs> and when did you become employed there? Um, well, I, think I was offered the job on, I believe, January 14th. Um, but I still had another job at the time. What year? Um, 2022. Okay, so January 14th, 2022. <laughs> yeah, so I had to give my other job two weeks notice, okay. and then I was going on vacation, and so my actual start date was February 6th, officially. Okay. Um, but I, I did go in and try and get a little bit of training and things during the two weeks I was still working at the other job. Okay, and what, what, what were you hired to do for Open Stories Foundation? Um, well, my title was Director of Operations, but um, 
the main things that I did were picking up the mail, um, helping with um, making sure that production of the podcast ran smoothly. Um, just the atmosphere of the studio. Um, so bringing in snacks for the snack bar. I purchased a snack bar thing um, that I was, um, anyways, I just feel that, I don't know, just kind of office duties. So you did a lot of everything. Oh, everything. Okay. <laughs> and would you consider, at that time, would you consider that Mr. Dillon was your boss? Yes, he was. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, you said you had a lot of um, tasks you just described to us. They seem basic ops tasks. Yeah. Uh, as you continued your employment there, mm -hmm. um, did you have the opportunity to uh, in, get other other experiences, tasks assigned to you? Yeah. What what things did you also start to do while you were there? Um, they started to let's see i did payroll i i didn't know how to do payroll before coming into the company so their accountant um started training me on that and i did it for only a couple months myself and then um john took that over um i co-hosted uh, i believe that started in March or early April, I can't remember the exact date. Um, Kara got sick, and I kind of stepped in for her. Who's Kara? Kara's another co-host that used to work at um, Open Stories Foundation. Okay, so uh, it, it's Mr. Delet. Just help me understand because mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't find all. I'm, I'm new at this environment. Mm -hmm. um, is Mr. Delet the primary individual who does the podcasts? Yes. And does he do podcasts on his own? Um, yes, interviewing another person. Okay, mm -hmm. and then does, and I heard you say co-host, so he also has co-hosts? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, which I was one of, and then there were others also. Okay. And Kara was one of those. Right. Okay, yeah. and so you, a few months after you started, you started to co-host podcasts? Um, February, March, April, yeah. Okay, what's a podcast? podcast is for the Mormon stories podcast it is a audio um, on like Spotify and things like that okay. and then it's also video on YouTube and and then I think they link them to their website too all right so it's just an interview, interview. discussion yeah their main focus is stories um, from people who have left the LDS Church and are now um, in a different path spiritually and it's kind of their story of leaving the church and all right so earlier you told me you were employed by open stories foundation, open stories foundation. Mm -hmm. but then you said mormon stories is that different mormon stories is the name of the podcast that's under open stories foundation okay and that is mr delens right and that's where i worked okay. that's where i was stationed to work in uh, so you're doing is it doing is a podcast always live no um, and when I, I, the question I, that if you were to start talking I could turn turn it on in here right away that's what I mean by live so it's not always that way you know well sometimes they're recorded beforehand okay. and then just played for everyone and sometimes they're live like when it's actually happening okay so it's not always a given that a podcast will be broadcast Right. Is broadcast the right word? Uh, the, I don't know. There's so many words. Yeah. Okay. All right. Live, not live. Okay. Yeah. So you have the opportunity to work with Mr. DeLynn mm -hmm. uh, in these Mormon Stories podcasts. Right. Uh, and I think you said that there were others as well that did these Mormon Stories podcasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you enjoy doing that? Yeah. Okay. Did you, mm -hmm. um, how did you learn? I mean, were they helpful in teaching you and guiding you? Had you ever done one before? No. <laughs> no. Um, and I, when he first asked me, I said maybe, 
like I was a little bit weary about it because um, going on to the podcast, it's a it's a high profile ex Mormon podcast, and so I would be public, and um, I had a little bit of worry about that because my director of operations job is not public. Okay, and when you say um, it's high profile ex Mormon podcast, mm -hmm. uh, do you also consider yourself to be an ex Mormon? Yes. Is Mr. Does Mr. Glenn, and to the best of your knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, is mm -hmm. does Mr. Glenn also represent um, as a, an ex Mormon? Yes, I believe so. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, I can. Okay. I would say that. <laughs> okay. So it, it becomes more of a public persona for you. So yes. Yeah. N no one knows me when I'm just in the office. Okay. You know. And he asked you to to do that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, and and as you started to do that, how did, how was that experience? Um, I, Mr. Dillon. It was good. And during the podcast. Sorry, I need to be clear. That's okay. <laughs> So wait, what are you saying? Uh, when we were doing the podcast mm -hmm. with Mr. Dillon, mm -hmm. how did that generally go in the beginning? In the beginning, it was it was great. He praised me a lot, um, sent me comments from listeners that um, praised me, um, and said, like, um, I don't know, just like pumped me up. Are you ready to conquer the world? Are you, we can be partners in this. Um, I don't know. Just like send me comments when like when people would say, "Oh, I love Jen as a new co-host." He would send them to me through our Slack message. So with that, your understanding then, or was it fairly positive? Yeah, a good, a good experience. Yeah. Uh, these podcasts, what are they? What are they meant to do for the uh, the people who hear or watch them? Um, they're meant to be vulnerable. They're meant for someone who's going through leaving a high demand religion is hard because um, you usually lose your sorry. It's okay. You usually lose your community as well as your religion, and sometimes for some people, even their families. So, um, so it's hard. You know, and I feel alone. And like I did, I felt like I was at the time one of the only people going through it. Which is why, um, like, I was trying to find, which I think all, not all, a lot of people going through that same tr transition are trying to find others to connect to that have the same story or something similar. And so that's the, the podcast. Oh, yeah, people yeah. who are going through what you just described. Right, yeah. It's people telling their story of um, moving from uh, an organized religion. And, uh, yeah, I demand religion to you know something different. You know, and it, it, everyone's path is a little bit different. So usually you can find um, usually you can find someone within all the podcasts that they do have done you know that kind of has a similar story to you and so it's super connecting for people okay so I, I, is it fair to say that it offers individuals um a sense of belonging or i'm not alone and there are right. people who have, have walked before me and right have done this. Okay. yeah <laughs> all right and um it sounds like uh, the experience was positive mm -hmm. uh, and that and that was early last year mm -hmm. uh, that you were doing that. Mm -hmm. um, did you continue to do the podcasts through the summer? Um, yeah. And did you ever do a podcast on your own? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, but never aired. <clears throat> it. I did a podcast. John had... It's okay. <laughs> I had taken... You no, know, I've never done one on your own. Yes. Okay. Mm. And but it wasn't aired. Okay, so it's not one that was aired. Right. Um, and why did you do this podcast on your own? Um, I had to give me the, the basic answer, not the content. Mm. Um, what happened? We'll talk about that. Okay, ask, ask your question again. I'm sorry. Okay, so why is it that you uh, did a podcast on your own? Um, to practice. Okay. Because um, John had 
offered the idea of me hosting some podcasts okay. on Mormon stories. Okay, so you, you felt like the opportunity was there and you were encouraged maybe to explore that? Yeah, he encouraged me to practice anytime I wanted to okay. in the studio. All right, so from what I understood that you just said, you did do a podcast. Did you do more than one? No. Yeah. Okay, this podcast, uh, what was the date that you did this podcast? Um, sorry, I have so many dates in my head. Okay. <laughs> I want to be fair to say it was in the summer? Yeah, it was like July, June or July. Okay, so, uh, and when you did this podcast, mm -hmm. was, it, was it live? No. Okay. It was never, no. Okay, so it was recorded? Yes. Okay, and I think you said one of the purposes was to learn. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell us what the subject matter was of this podcast? Yes. Um, so I had gathered women, a group of women, for a podcast on autonomy of our bodies. Okay. And <coughs> were there any men that were invited to participate? No. I had asked John not to be um, involved um, because I had brought the panel together to talk about bodily autonomy for women, and I knew some of the women's stories were hard, um, and I asked that he not be at the studio. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Were there any men who were interviewees or podcast um, participants mm -hmm. uh, during, were there any men? Okay. You said, I, I thought I heard you say a panel of women. Yes. How many women? There were four, including me, okay. and then one assistant um, that I had there to run the machine. Okay. So was it videoed or just mm -hmm. audio? Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. And looking back, mm -hmm. generally, how do you think it went? Um, I think it... There's parts of it that I love, and then it's the very first time I ever hosted a podcast, and so as far as like my skills as a host was not great, because okay. um, that was the whole purpose of it, um, was to learn, um, and learn how, how to be the host instead of a co-host. So you said there were four female participants mm -hmm. included. Mm -hmm. um, Generally, what was the subject matter of your conversation during this podcast? Um, it went everywhere from um, rape to abortion to teen pregnancy to child sex abuse. Um, yeah. Okay. All over. <laughs> and uh, do, do you feel like participating in that podcast made you feel vulnerable? Oh, yes. Do you, do you think, <laughs> and I said so. <laughs> do you think that the other participants also felt vulnerable? Yes. Um, yeah. I've, I've spoken to them and they did, yes. Okay. And during this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, did others disclose information, uh, personal, private, um, mm -hmm. scary? difficult mm -hmm. information about their experiences. Yes. Okay. And did you have the opportunity to do the same? Yes. And during this podcast, I mean, at this podcast, mm -hmm. was that the first time that you disclosed this painful personal information openly to others? Yes, in a, de in a detail that was in the podcast, yes. Okay. Um, and I know it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't need the details, but mm -hmm. what did you talk about? Um, I talked about Sorry, I'm having like an issue with it being broadcast right now. With what being broadcast? This courtroom. Okay, well, they, the way that that works, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, then I'm just going to ask you some general questions, okay? Sure. Um, did you talk about your childhood experiences? 
Yeah. Um, with members of your ward and others that... Yeah, was it I'm April? okay. I can do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I talked about um, that I was sexually abused as a child okay. um, between the ages of six and nine okay. by um, my primary teacher and um, a couple of boys in my ward. Okay. All right. And then I talked about um, a teen pregnancy. And after disclosing that, um, yeah. I'm going to back up. You told us that you had asked Mr. DeLynn not to participate, correct? Correct. Okay. And did he assure you that he would not? Yes. Um, did you have any indication, or was there indication that he honored your request? Um, I found it later that he didn't. Okay. Um, uh, I believe what happened is in the beginning, I think I, what I remember is me FaceTiming him and asking about a certain function of the keyboard um, when we were setting up. And um, that um, he helped, he helped with the situation. And then um, I told him, he started giving me like pointers as a host. <clears throat> and I had said, told him, okay, John, you're making me nervous now. I need you to go. Because <laughs> at that point, I just, I was already nervous because it was the first time doing it. Um, so um, as far as I knew, he had left at that time before we started. Okay. Had you ever disclosed to Mr. DeLynn um, your um, child sex abuse, um, as you just recently described for us, had you ever disclosed that to him? No. Okay. Uh, did you disclose it to him directly after your podcast? No. And after the podcast, mm -hmm. um, was there um, ever a suggestion that it be reviewed, uh, either by you or somebody else? Uh, for critique to see what you could do better so that you could become a better podcaster. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, who made those suggestions? Um, well, what I remember is there was a... I had gone to John and said that I was having a vulnerability hangover okay. after recording it. And um, that it, I just needed a, a while. <laughs> I needed a minute. And um, there was an exchange one day on our Slack message that we used in the company um, that said, um, "What I saw, what I saw of the podcast, or he had referenced the podcast." And I, I said, you watch the podcast? Like, I asked him, and he said, what I remember is he said, I, I popped in every now and then just to make sure the equipment was running. And I said, okay, well, I don't, I don't want anyone to watch it. I don't want the editors to edit it. Like, I just need it to stay recorded, like, in our files, because I... I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'm ready to for that to go out into the world. Okay. Um, and he suggested um, that his wife, Margie, as a woman, could watch the podcast for me. And um, because she hosts on Mormon Stories also. Okay. Um, and she could give me some feedback um, as the host of the podcast. And... Um, I I don't know if I said yes right away or I thought about it for a while and then I said that that would be okay and so she did and she watched it and, and I watched it over and um, she wrote down some things I wrote down some things we um, 
decided to go to lunch to discuss it. Um, and at lunch, she let me go first. I kind of told her what I saw that I had done and that didn't look right, you know, as the host. And then she gave me her list, which almost matched my list. And then she gave me a couple other things that weren't on my list. Okay, so and we had a great lunch. Okay. And uh, is, is Marty in the courtroom? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is she, where is she? Is She's like, room? yeah, okay. right there in a mauvish color. Okay. All right. So that's Mr. DeLynn's breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's also a podcaster. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. we're more, she does Mormon Stories podcasts. Right. Mm -hmm. and we're open for OSF. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you got right. it. Okay. So you, you have this. This podcast that you did, mm -hmm. uh, you said in June or July of 2022, yeah. uh, and you had made the request that John Dot be involved, mm -hmm. and that you wanted it to be um, private. You right. Were, you were right. Right. Uh, you did have some feedback mm -hmm. uh, from from Margie. Margie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should call her Mrs. Dillon because I know yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them have their own. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to be disrespectful. Me either. Um, okay. And that was positive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, All right. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna move forward a little bit. Okay. Um, did uh, you did you continue to work at OSF? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in August mm -hmm. of 2022, do you recall if there was an interesting news event or release of information? Um, concerning the Boy Scouts and the LDS Church. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And yeah. go ahead, get on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, it was a podcast planned to discuss that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about, um, do you recall when that was? August 10th. August 10th. Okay. And did a podcast take place? Yes. And did you participate in that podcast? Yes. And who else participated in the podcast? Um, John Dillon and Gerardo, I think it's Mono is how you pronounce his last name. Is, is he present in the courtroom too? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yes, he is. Oh. He is behind his uh, lawyer. So I do see him now. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so t tell me a little bit about this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and how it started. Yeah, um, Were you co-host? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Gerardo and I. Okay. So three of you total. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was an AP article. We called it the AP article. Um, it's basically the article that came out about um, the church having to pay the scouts. Um, because of the child sex abuse that had gone on within the scouting program. And um, we, whenever anything breaking within the LVS church comes out, we usually do a podcast about it. So breaking, you mean like um, exciting news? news. Yeah, or something yeah. good or, or just sometimes bad? Or just Probably mostly bad. Okay. Well, <laughs> to be honest. At least for the reputation of the LVS church. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. So d d go ahead and tell me about this um, podcast and how it started and what happened. Um, we had decided to do a podcast um, about the AP article. Um, Gerardo came in, we sat down, um, this podcast was live. So then we were getting everything ready for it to go live. Um, so this was a pre-recorded with mm -hmm. the opportunity for edit. Right. Okay. And who was the main podcaster? John Dillon. Okay. So go ahead and tell us what happened. Um, so the podcast started, we did um, introductions. Um, and he started to tell everyone about what the podcast was about. Um, and then I don't recall <laughs> the exact words, but he um, turned to me and he said um, something to the effect of 
Um, I know this. I know this is um, important to you, or something like that. I know this is important to you because um, of the, your abuse. As I don't know. The exact word, I need to know the okay. <laughs> something about I know. Yeah. Just tell me what happened. Um, he said something like. Um, and Jen, I know um, this is a subject that's dear to you because of you going through the child sex abuse when you were a child. Something to that effect where he brought up my childhood abuse um, publicly on a live podcast. And um, I did, I did had no idea that was going to happen. Um, and so... You see me kind of freeze and he asks me a question and I think I respond with a word and then the camera switches off of me and I just break down because because I myself have never talked about it before. I sorry. <laughs> it was um, something that I was like trying to get up the courage to do on my own. And um, then he said that to me. Like I just broke down. Like, I just lost it. Okay. Did and you, did you know he knew? No, not to that. No. Okay. Um, so, okay. so you have no idea that he, he knew about <laughs> what you talked about during the uh, the close of the podcast. Right. Okay. Uh, and not his, um, uh, that had been reviewed by his wife. Right. I had said some, I had said I had abuse within my, in my story. I had said I had said words like that in the office before, um, but I had never said me, um, and that it was um, sexual abuse. Um, I hadn't gone into that detail with him ever. But you did talk about it during that other podcast mm -hmm. with those other three women, right? Okay. Um, and, and again, you had asked him not to participate right. or be involved in that. Correct. Okay. Uh, so how did the rest of the podcast go? Is it fair to say it was very difficult for you and um, you were sobbing? Yeah, I think I had to... Oh, sorry. Oh. It's okay. I had to um, leave the co-host desk. And, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a it's little, I was uncontrollably crying and couldn't breathe. And, um, you can hear me on the podcast that lasts about six minutes-ish. Um, and then I try to pull myself together and, um, return to the desk um, where I had the computer system <sighs> Sorry, that was a I was monitoring comments because it was a live podcast so we block or delete comments that are um, posted negatively um, during every live, live podcast so um, sorry I just pulled myself together and tried to participate where I could. All right. All right. I'm not going to, based on how you were raised and who you are today, mm -hmm. um, that uh, you probably have had to do that many times. Yeah. Okay. And all experience, all walks of life, we all have, correct? Right. You, know, you, you got to pull it together right. because you're in a live podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you at any time? Authorize him to disclose that. No, 
your consent. Did, prior to that podcast, did he tell you he was going to, um, I think, I think what I read is, is called outing? Yeah. Did he tell you he was going to out you? No. But um, I heard you testify that you tried to come back and try to be professional and finish it. Yes. Okay. Did the podcast finish? Yes. And what happened after the podcast? Um, were you approached by Mr. Delaney? Um, I got up and walked away. Oh, okay. At first, to the other side of the room, as soon as it was over. Um, and he asked me, I can't, I actually can't remember if it was Gerardo or John, um, asked me if I was okay, and I said no. a message from him that said that he could take him outing me, that he was sorry that he had outed me, and that he could take it out where he outed me. And, and he would, re you guys save the podcast someplace? So if I wanted to watch it, I can, I can find it somehow. Yeah. Even though I didn't watch it live. Okay, so it was an offer to edit out that part of what what stored out there in the universe. A whole, I mean, a couple places. Okay. Yeah. And you responded how? I said no. Um, that if he took himself out of the beginning of the podcast, um, that he would need to take me out of the entire podcast because for me. There had, been, there had been some other comments that I made further into the podcast when I had put myself together and came back in that um, then it would seem like in the middle of some podcast about Boy Scouts that I chose that podcast to tell the world about my childhood sex abuse. And, um, so I told him, no, he couldn't do that. But if he chose to do that, that he needed to take me out of it. So he had to own it, yeah. right, basically? Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, is that, that podcast still out there anywhere? Yes. Okay. And, um, okay, so that was August 10th, I think you said. Is that correct? Yeah, and the night of August 10th. Okay, and is Mr. Glenn on August 10th still your boss? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, after this incident, mm -hmm. took place, did you continue to work uh, for your job at um, Open Storage Foundation? Yes. Okay. Did you have um, some difficulty uh, with Mr. Dillon, um after that? 
well, in doing your job? Yes. Okay. And did you, did there, you came a time where, um, let's see, you mentioned that you have, a, you, you also, your story. Um, mm -hmm. And is it, do people tell their stories? Um, a Mormon story is just their individual story with a podcaster? Yes. Okay. And did you have the opportunity to do that? Yes. Okay. And do you recall when you did that? Yes. And when was that? Um, the 22nd and 23rd of August. Okay. So it was uh, 10 to 14 days after mm -hmm. this event. Mm -hmm. okay. And who, who did you do, who did you tell your story to? I mean, how, did that, how was that set up? Um, I told John Duran was the host okay. and Margie, his wife, was the co-host. Okay. So it was the three of you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long did this take to do? Um, well, it was, it was supposed to be one day, but it turned into two full days of filming and four podcasts. Okay. So how long is a normal podcast? Mm, well, it depends on the host. Um, they last anywhere, I would say, one and a half hours to eight. Okay. And, and so you have four, four of those? Four, session, four podcasts? Four podcasts. Okay. Somewhere in the middle of that. All right. And despite what had previously happened, did you share your story with Mr. and Mrs. Dillon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was that broadcast live? Mm -hmm. And what were the parameters of you sharing your story? For example, did you tell them, don't publish this, or is publish the right word? That's fine. Broadcast it mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. I'm ready. Or how does that work? Yeah, well, that's, a, that's common knowledge in women's stories. Okay. That whoever's getting interviewed has rights to when they want their podcast released and if they want a part taken out. Um, we don't release a story unless unless we're given the rights to do so by the person we interview. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to move a little bit quicker because we're going to run out of time. Okay. I okay. just noticed. Um, Alright, so you went ahead and did your story. Mm -hmm. um, four sessions. Yes. So has that been broadcast or published? No. Have you asked them not to do that? Yes. Or have you asked Mr. Dolan not to do that? Yes. Okay. And does Mr. Dolan have control about whether that would happen? I mean, is he in charge? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, after you did these four days, um, were you exhausted? Four podcasts. Four podcasts. It's okay. okay. Two days. Two days. Podcasts. Four podcasts. Yes. Yes. Okay. Extremely. Okay. And were you extended a, a courtesy by Mr. and Mrs. Dillon for working the re remainder of that week? Yes. And do you recall what that was? Yes. And what is it? <laughs> well, Mar Margie offered, she said, you should take the next two days off. Okay. Um, I only had stuff going on that I needed to get done, so <laughs> I accepted the one day off on Wednesday. Okay. And then I told them I would work from home on Thursday. Okay. And what was the date of that Thursday? Do you remember? It was the 25th of August. Okay. So on the 25th, you were working from home and mm -hmm. did you um, receive some contact from Mr. Dillon? Yes. And what was that contact? He wanted to have a meeting at the office. Okay, and so did he invite you to come into the office? Yes. And is it fair to say that you have a lot of stuff scheduled that day? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and some stuff that um, uh, emotional, vulnerable, difficult to deal with? Very. Okay. Um, did you in fact go into the office as requested? Yes. And how did that interaction go between you and Mr. DeLynn? Not well. Okay. Um, so neither one of you handled it well? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then did you end up leaving the office? I did. Yeah, I stood up and walked out. Okay. But before you went in to um, meet Mr. Delenn, because he had called you in, um, did you have the opportunity to reach out to the board of directors of OSF? Yes, I did. Okay. I Go ahead. Um, 
I messaged Clint and Carrie, the board members. Okay, so Clint, do you know his last name? Clint Martin. Okay, and do you know Carrie's last name? Carrie, I believe it's Whitbeck is how you okay, pronounce so it. Okay, so Mr. Martin and Ms. Whitbeck, mm -hmm. um, you reached out to them mm -hmm. um, about having to go in for this meeting. Yes, I told them that I had to discuss a lot of things with John, and if it didn't go well, that um, I would be putting in an official claim after the meeting. Okay, and that binder that you have right there. Yeah. If you could please take a look at A. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what you what you see on A, Exhibit A? Yes, this is the message I sent to Clint and Carrie. Okay. Um, at one thirty before going into the meeting. Okay. What time is your meeting scheduled with? Um, Two thirty. Okay. So you would set that to, uh, or you sent them a message mm -hmm. um, indicating what you just told us. Mm -hmm. You have some things you have to discuss with them, and if it didn't go well, you were going to be uh, reaching back out to, uh, to lodge a claim. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And as you're looking at those, mm -hmm. uh, what are the pictures of? My text messages to the board. Okay, so, sorry, I'm blind. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Thrive Clint. Is that Mr. Martin? Yeah, that's how I have him in my phone. Okay. <laughs> so I know who he is. Thrive is another company? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it says OSF Carrot. Is that Ms. Whitbeck? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And in looking at those um, copies of these text messages, yeah. um, is this accurate? Is this what you, in fact, sent them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did they respond? Yes. And were, did, were they, uh, was the response appropriate? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that's on page one of Exhibit A, those, those text messages. Page one and two, the first two pages. Yes? Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> After your meeting with Mr. Uh, Dillon, mm -hmm. did you, I think you said it didn't go well mm -hmm. when you left. Did mm -hmm. you reach back out to the board? Yes, I called Clint as I was walking to my car and he answered. Okay. And when you had a discussion with Clint, mm -hmm. what did you tell him? Um, he asked about the meeting. Okay. And so I told him about the meeting and that it didn't go well and I wasn't able to discuss with John the things I wanted to discuss. Okay and that I would need to put in a claim to the board. Okay, so you did tell Mr. Martin you were going to put a claim into the board. Yes, ma'am. And what do you mean by claim into the board? Um, OSF has a policy that we're all to follow and um, there's a process that if you feel the policy has been violated, that you can call the board members and put in a claim. Okay. And so is, is it like a handbook, an employment handbook? Um, it, or did you just it's it? on their website. Oh, okay. So they post it on the website as their policy for the Open Stories Foundation okay. and, and, and anyone underneath them. Okay. All right. And did you, in fact, um, what was the response from Mr. Martin? Did they set up a meeting? Not at that time. Okay. They said that um, they were going to give everyone the weekend to cool off. <laughs> they, who are they? Um, Carrie and Clint. Okay, Mr. Martin and Ms. with that. Mm -hmm. um, the board. Okay. And did you, in the conversations mm -hmm. with Mr. Martin, mm -hmm. I don't want any contact from Mr. Delitt. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's against policy. Okay, so but as soon as you put a claim in, the person the claim is against cannot be present in any of the investigation. Okay. And including the board meeting. All right, can you turn to tab B? Yeah. 
or it, it is, I'm sorry, it's not the world's best copy. That's okay. Can you tell us um, what that is, the first few pages of Tappy? Yes, this is the um, highlighted policy that I took to the board meeting. Okay, so this is the policy that you were talking about? Yes, ma'am. And this is what you had anticipated you would be speaking to the board about? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how do you know what the policy says? When I was given my position as director of operations, um, this, I was specifically told that this policy was something that I needed to read and get to know because I would be the first contact with anyone who had a claim. They would come to me and then I would um, see if I could help them. If not, then we would go together to either the board or John or whoever. Okay, so but the policy says no contact for the person that's being complained, complained against. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. And did you request some time off um, until, well, let's see, when did you meet with the board, the board of directors? Tuesday. Tuesday, you recall the date? 30th. Okay, so how did that board meeting take place? Was it virtual? Yes. Okay, and when you signed on, who was on the virtual board meeting? John DeLone, Kay Ritbeck, and Clint Martin. Okay, so uh, Mr. Dillon and then the two board members that you referred to. Correct. Is uh, Mr. Dillon also part of the board of directors? Yes. Okay. But you had complained against him, so you didn't. So, did you anticipate he would be there? No, and it's against policy for him to be there. Okay, so was this board meeting recorded? Yes. Okay, and is that to best of your knowledge? Is that general? Generally, how we do things? They record these things. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's the only thing. So it was recorded. Yeah. Uh, during this during this board meeting, were you asked if you wanted uh, Mr. Dillon removed? Yes. And how did you respond? Um, I think I didn't answer for a second because I was thrown off that he was allowed to be there okay. at all. Um. Um, there had been messages where it looked like he was assuming he was going to be there, but with me already asking Clint that he not be there and it being against policy, I assumed that Clint would be telling him he could not be, and it wasn't my job to do that. Okay, so did you, did you ultimately say, no, he's got to go? Or did you no. go ahead and capitulate and go ahead board with him participating? Yes, I was told that he was there so they didn't have to go back and tell him what I said. So like there to listen Okay, is what I assumed okay. when it began. All right, so you have this board meeting and mm -hmm. it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, did you um, expect that that board meeting would remain confidential? Yes, definitely. Okay, and during this board meeting, um, did you have the opportunity to present your your complaint uh, or complaints about Mr. Delin? No. Okay, and uh, this was all recorded. And during the, this, what kinds of what are the topics that were discussed during this meeting? Um, the first thing. Um, I believe they asked me was about the Thursday meeting. <clears throat> um, so it was about the meeting that you had that did not go well. Right, okay. but I had already, I was kind of thrown off by that because I had already told the board about that meeting. Um, so I, it, it was weird to me that they were asking me about it again because um, I was under the assumption after my phone call with Clint that I would be able to come to the board with what I was claiming. Okay, so you had already discussed that, that August 25th meeting. Right. You didn't realize that that was what they were anticipating discussing. Right. You thought they'd be talking about your your complaint. 
Right. Okay. Did they ever talk about your complaint? No, I never got to my complaint. Okay. So you talked about this August 25th meeting, mm -hmm. and was Mr. Dillon allowed to participate in the conversation? Yes. And so it was, uh, was it kind of, um, you get to say what you want to say, and he gets to say what he wants to say, and Mr. Martin and Ms. Whitback were going to try to smooth things over. So, I mean, was that generally, what was your understanding of that meeting? Um, I felt like they asked me a question, and then they asked John to say his, what he felt about the question that they had asked me. Okay. And then they allowed John to speak whatever he wanted. Okay. Um, and then they asked me to respond to what John had said about what he had wanted to say. Okay. Um, and then I think I tried to go into what I had come to the board to try and tell them. And I was told I had 30 seconds. All right, so they would not allow you to speak about your complaints? Right. Okay. Uh, during this board meeting, did you, during the conversations and the questions you were asked, did you disclose anything that you would expect would remain confidential? Yes, a lot of things. Okay. Um, Sorry. Give me some examples of a few. I, I don't need the details. Um, um, did you discuss your children? Yes. Did you discuss your husband? Yes. Did you discuss where your family members were at any given time during the day? Yes. Okay. And where they lived. My parents, where they lived. Um, my children. My um, childhood sex abuse and where it happened. Some of it. Not all of it, but some. Did you discuss that during the story? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, was it still your understanding that this would remain confidential? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did that, has that? Um, how, how long was that video? Oh, I don't even know. Okay. An hour and a hour, maybe? Oh. I don't know. Sorry, I don't go back and watch them. Okay. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Um, all right. Uh, so that meeting ends. <laughs> um, it, it's, it is <laughs> memorialized on video. Yeah. Um, has that meeting remained confidential? No, ma'am. We're going to talk about in a minute. That about that in a minute. Uh, after the meeting, what did you do? Um. After the meeting, I called my husband because it didn't go well um, the way that I had planned for it to go. Um, and I didn't get to say any of the things that I had brought. Um, so uh, he was at the fire station. Um, and I didn't get a hold of him, and I'm, I'm expecting when he got back, because when he called me, he must have been on a call, okay. and um, we talked for a long time, and I retold the story of what happened, okay. and he said um, that I should just text them the highlighted policy I had brought to the meeting, and that, and ask for another time. Okay to meet with them when they were available. And did you in fact do that? Yes. And did you ever get the opportunity to meet with the board to discuss those complaints? No, yeah, ma'am. Okay, and uh, did you communicate with the board about wanting the opportunity to discuss those complaints? Yes, ma'am. And, but they never allowed that or didn't schedule it? No, they didn't schedule it. They said they weren't ready when I texted them. Um, asking if we could meet, or when that time was for us to meet. Okay, and then on September 2nd, mm -hmm. 2022, what happened? Um, I received an email at 12.30ish, I would say, um, that I was fired, okay. and that um, it was because of restructuring at the OSF. Okay. And I know you dispute that reason, but for purposes of today, we don't need to discuss that. Okay. Um, okay. So after you were terminated, um, did you have occasion to receive um, any 
further communications from Mr. DeLitt. Uh, specifically, did we reach out to you to try to reconcile? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you recall when that was? Um, th there was some before the board's email okay. on Friday, um, and there was some after. Um, the, I think it was like the first week and a half of September, maybe the next week after I was fired. Okay, so is it fair to say that um, despite the policy saying no contact and despite your request that he not contact you, mm -hmm. he reached out to you after that, um, before you were terminated, mm -hmm. and also after you were terminated? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and after, after receiving um, his communications, mm -hmm. after you were terminated, mm -hmm. um, what was your response? I messaged the board members, Clinton Carey, John, and his wife, Maggie, and I specifically asked for no contact, that I had requested no contact, and I am continuing to get contacted by him, okay. and I wanted it to stop. Okay, so again, you said, don't con I don't want him contacting me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and did, did you get an acknowledgement back about that request? Yes, Clint texted me back and said, okay. um, So that communication that was sent to you um, by Mr. DeLynn mm -hmm. uh, after you were terminated, mm -hmm. um, did it also include a video? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and do you know how long that video was? An hour and 27 minutes, I believe. 23, something like that. Why did he send you a video? What, what was the video? Um, I only watched 16 minutes of the video. Okay. Um, to this day, I turned it off okay. at 16 minutes because of the gaslighting and um, tactics I had learned that he uses and I was not going to subject myself to that anymore. Okay. Uh, in those communications, did he indicate to you that that video was just going between the two of you? Yes, ma'am. He said it was just between the two of us. No one else knew about it, even his wife, Marky. This is words, I believe. Okay. To the best of your understanding, has that video ever been released out there into the public? Not that I know of. Okay. So he knows how not to release them. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, did you have the opportunity um, to retain counsel um, at, at or about this time? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. And did you, in fact, hire an attorney? I did. Okay. And did your attorney send communication, uh, more communication, uh, to cease and desist contact? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. And I, is that... I believe that's attached to your. Okay. We'll get to that. We're going to go real quick through your. Yeah. Uh, your stopping your injunction. Your Honor. Yes. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that we don't run out of time to present our case. We, we are. I, I saw the time in council. Um, if you're okay going into the lunch hour, then I can give the parties a little bit more time. It seems like, you know, obviously I want to give you at least as much time as, as I have. And I'm mindful that you still have to do cross examination. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just. Check. I do have a meeting, but let me see if it's one that I can use. I have a deposition at one, Your Honor. At one? Uh, okay, so. Your Honor, I have all day booked because your calendar shows we are all you've got. <laughs> and uh, this is important um, to my client, and, and it's important um, to their client. Right. Uh, I, I, I can hurry through, but we're going to get objections about no foundation, et cetera, et cetera. I will do my best to move it along. Right. It's not, I don't have court hearings, but I have other matters, um, other meetings that are scheduled um, this afternoon. And so that's why when I sent out the hearing, I said, I believe that it said from 9 to 11. And that's why at the beginning I said each side was going to get an hour. And I'm mindful that you know, that this is a, important, obviously. But it's um, just a lot. <laughs> but but I, I mean, the best I can do is just give you um, a total lunch hour. Okay. We can go a little bit into the lunch hour, but uh, I have meetings this afternoon and it looks like council has other commitments as well. And rather than being rushed if we need to, I, I'm okay and I'm sure you would be too as well um, if we have to set a second, the second. couple hours. Okay. I mean, I, I don't want to step on their toes, but we bear the burden by preponderance of the evidence. Right. And 
Um, but that's what we're here to do. Council, is that something that would work? Uh, for Setting a second. To, to come back for a part two, I suppose? No, Your Honor. Given that Ms. Camp has chosen to publicize this and use it as a, frankly, a public relations ploy, we'd appreciate that this be resolved today. Okay. And okay. I also note that Ms. Washburn has spent most of her hour talking about things that weren't included in the petition for the stocking injunction and all things that happened almost a year ago, some more than a year ago. So I, my preference would be to issue a ruling today okay. as well. So let's try to uh, move things along. Uh, absolutely, but, but Your Honor, I'm gonna, I, I do believe that it's important um, that the, the court understand the circumstances that are surrounding right. everything because that is part of our burden. Right. Um, the objective standard of a petitioner and her circumstances, uh, would she, um, suffer emotional, dis emotional distress or would she be afraid? So I am sorry if we have to have a little bit of background, but I do believe in order for us to meet our burden of proof um, that, that you need to have a little bit of the background. I tried really yes. carefully to stay away from um, the allegations that, that they have made in their civil filing um, and because I don't know that they're relevant. I don't want this to be a circus. Uh, and Council Valtoy, the court has um, given you uh, more time. This was supposed to end at 11, but I'm willing that's to- That's fine, we're gonna move it along. So we're gonna talk fast. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let's go to exhibit T. <coughs> Do you recognize that document? Yes. And what is that document? Um, the stocking um, protection order papers I filled out. Okay, so it's a request for the civil stocking injunction. Mm -hmm. Did you complete this document? Yes. And would you testify, I mean, could you testify uh, and swear to the truth of everything that you included in this document? Yes, ma'am. Let's go to page, um, it is your attachment. So it's after page six, which is the final page of the request for the protective order. Okay. okay. What? Stocking injunction. Um, uh, you've outlined uh, incidences mm -hmm. um, starting from August 29th, which, we, which you've testified about. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you outline um, contact on August 31st. Mm -hmm. Did he contact you on August 31st? Yes, ma'am. Did he contact you on September 10th? Yes, ma'am. Did he contact you on um, with an email on September 10th? Yes, ma'am. So both two times on mm -hmm. the September 10th. Yes, ma'am. Um, on September 11th, mm -hmm. um, is that the, it says here that that's the date you sent the, the text message to the board. Mm -hmm. um, you testified about that. That's accurate. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, on Saturday, September 15th, um, you, you stated in your request for the stalking injunction, mm -hmm. your attorney sends a cease and desist letter. Did yes. that in fact happen? Yes, ma'am. Um, and on your, your next date, or number 10, you say September 22nd through February 13th, mm -hmm. you say a smear campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, share a private board meeting with the public, smear your name in private groups and meetings and homes and conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked you earlier about that, that confidential board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, is this part of what you're talking about? It was published. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it included all that information that you testified about that was um, difficult and vulnerable for you. Your Honor. Right. Okay. Objection. She's leading the witness and essentially testifying for her. I'm going to give her a little bit of room to lead because of our time constraints. So um, I'm, I'm going to give her a little bit of leeway. Go ahead, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, on, on the next page, mm -hmm. a underlined, it says something there. Um, uh, who's he goes by Radio Free Mormon in the ex-Mormon space. Is he another uh, Mormon uh, podcaster? Yeah, he's a lawyer and a podcaster. Okay, and he lives in where? I, Washington, I okay. think. Uh, uh, do you know? Is he, does he have a relationship? Is he friends at all with Mr. Delane? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what is it that he did? Um, and why do you think he did it? Um, Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Okay. Did... Uh, this gentleman, and I, uh, did he uh, publish something during one of his podcasts that involved you? Yes, ma'am. No, what was it? The private board meeting. Okay. And, and he did not redact anything about my children. 
me, our family, our location, me and my childhood abuse. Nothing, he didn't redact anything. Okay, uh, where would he have gotten that? John Demetri. Objection calls for speculation, lack of foundation. I was thinking, uh, who has the ability, who controls those board meetings? I mean, where they're, they're saved on the computer. Do you know who, who is the one in charge of those? I don't know, but it would have to be one of the board members of the Open Source Foundation. Okay, I think you told us that Mr. Delane is one of the board members. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you testified that he's also a friend to this gentleman. Yeah, a really good friend. Um, all right, and did this take place after you indicated you had told him no contact? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, Thursday, February 9th. Uh, that's number 12 in your, your statement here. Mm -hmm. um, there's some something uh, was a board meeting re released in another way how did you find out February 9th was the board meeting the one before that is radio three women okay. lying for John Dillon on the reddit okay but you found out that he had released the confidential board meeting yes ma'am okay and, and did you find that out on February 9th yes and how is it that you became aware that that had happened Someone had told me. Okay. Someone messaged me. And, and so then you verified it yourself? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, then you say on February 12th, something happened. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was, I have a small podcast. Okay. And I was doing a live on Instagram where it's, um, you connect with your listeners. Okay. Um, there's usually about six people in my lives, but it's a way for me to connect with them and, and talk with them. Okay. Um, and I was doing one, and all of a sudden, John's name popped onto my live. So he came onto my live Instagram, okay. and I said, you're not welcome here. Get off. Please get off. Okay. And I waited, and he didn't. And so I asked the listeners, because I'm new to lives, I asked the listener, listeners, does anyone know how to block him off a of live? And um, I went and blocked him and then continued with the live, but had a little bit of a panic attack okay. on it. Um, I just wasn't expecting. Okay. So you had told him to contact, and then during the live, you said, Mr. Glenn, please get off. Not just, you're not welcome here. Right. So you told him. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you had to block him to make that happen. Right. On, let's see, number, oh. Look at, please look at exhibit E. Uh, can you tell me what that is? Um. This is the case that I filed against John Delan on the 16th of January. All right, so is it fair to say that this is a copy of a federal complaint, a complaint filed in the United States District Court for the District of Utah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, and is there a mark at the top that shows when it was filed? On the 17th of January. Okay, so you filed a lawsuit on January 17th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, has that lawsuit been served? It has not, ma'am. Okay, all right. And let's go back up to your exhibit okay. D. D? Yeah. Uh, we're going to go back through your little, your little timeline there. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I didn't want to put that in because it's in the timeline it fits. Um, so you had filed long before you were aware that they were going to file some lawsuit against you. Oh, yes. Okay. And so this was just last month that yeah. the um, you did that live and you asked him to go away or to leave. Um, okay, go to, uh, are you currently employed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and um, at your place of employment, mm -hmm. uh, or do you have a working relationship with others there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and have you been, have, look at exhibit F, please. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me what you see there in Exhibit F? Yes, these are emails that were sent to my new employer. Okay. 
And who are these emails from? Um, Chris. Well, tell me who they're from, and then tell me who you think they're from. Um, it says they're from Jenny Camp Sued. Okay. Um, but I think because of the language in them and the attachment of the private board meeting that it's John DeLine or someone that he asked to do it. Okay, so uh, and what, are the, what do these emails say to your employer? They say that kind of like beware of Jen Camp. She's um, falsely accused her prior boss of sexual harassment and fraudulent claims and um, just making it out to be some person that I'm not. Okay, hey, did more than one person at your place of employment receive these emails? Four different people, Four different people. that I know of. Okay, and you said that the podcast was, or no, I, I beg your pardon, the confidential board meeting was attached as yes, an exhibit? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what else was attached? Um, was a copy of their complaint that they filed against you attached? Yes. Okay, so a copy of a document from their lawsuit mm -hmm. and the board meeting were attached to these emails that were sent to four people at your place of employment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and so we're clear, you had told him no contact. Not many times. Okay. Uh, tell me what it's like now to drive to work. Um, as soon as the emails came to my work, um, I would drive around in the parking lot first okay. to see if he was parked there. Um, I was scared to get out of my car, so I would wait for someone to go into the building. Um, I would leave work when someone left. Um, I, it, it went to a different level of being frightened that I didn't know what he would do. I didn't know the extent that this was going to go to. And, um, I, I did, I started to fear that I would be hurt because someone was seeking out where I worked, seeking out who worked there, and then emailing them. And um, I know he has an influence. I know people do things for him. And I just am fearful. I am. And I'm fearful after that video was released because it gave specific things about my family and where to locate us. And I, I am fearful and he won't stop. I keep asking and you won't stop. In addition to your fear, do you feel like you've, you've suffered some emotional anger or distress? Um, do, how do you feel? Yes, I do. I've had to take medicine again. I've had to go to therapy more. Like. It's just, I tried to use all the things that were put in place to, for protection. I tried to use the board when that didn't happen. I tried to get counsel when that didn't happen. I filed a lawsuit. Then it continued. I got a stalking protection order. I'm just trying to, to make him stop. I'm trying to make it stop by using the correct Okay. Uh, Your Honor, that's all I have at this time. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Tom Chapter, Mr. Gostas will talk to you next. Okay. Can I get my chapstick? Can you some, would you like more water? Yeah, yeah I can grab it. I still have some. I'm okay. Is it on your chair? I think it's in my pocket of my coat. Sorry. Okay, so these are all numbers that I have them, and can I ask you to just plug this in? Actually, I'm going to plug it in right now, so it'll be easier to find you. 
Today, because you filed a motion for a temporary stocking injunction, you prepared that stocking injunction, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you gathered the evidence to support that stocking injunction? Yes, ma'am. And to support that stocking injunction, you wanted to include the very best evidence that you had of what had happened to you, didn't you? I did it quickly, so I don't know if I'd say it's the very best, but I gathered what I could quickly when I found out about the emails. And in the statements that you made, you included the, the incidents that you thought were the most persuasive to show evidence of stalking. Isn't that right? Uh, objection, Your Honor. She's not a lawyer. She's a lay person. Uh, overruled. Okay. You can go ahead and answer. So can you say it again? Sure. When you were, when you were preparing the stalking injunction, um, in addition to gathering the evidence, you also made a statement. Isn't that correct? When? I don't know you, what you're talking about. You, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. If you don't understand, please always ask me because I would yeah. really prefer that you understand yeah. the questions that you answer. Mm -hmm. So in addition to gathering evidence, you also, with your stocking injunction, prepared a written statement. And uh, is that right? I believe so. Yeah. And in that... At the end of it? At yeah. the end of the evidence? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I believe it was before the end of the evidence. But if you want to look... I believe your counsel referred to it as, um, let's see, Exhibit C. No, it's, yeah, Exhibit C. So on page six, you have the timeline of the stocking evidence, correct? Um, I don't see that in C. D, sorry. D. That's okay. Oh, D. 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 It's not important that you, there. does that sound familiar that you wrote something about what had happened to you and why you were seeking the stalking injunction? Yes, I'm sure I did. And when you did that, you wanted to include the incidents that were, you thought would be most persuasive to show that you had been stalked. Isn't that correct? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Um, you, you testified that on an August 10th podcast mm -hmm. that Mr. Dillon, and this is not something that's in your moving papers, so I'm, I'm just pointing out that that's not in your, in your moving papers, but you said that he disclosed something about your abuse on the air. Do you recall that testimony? Mm -hmm. Have you ever disclosed your abuse on a podcast that you knew had been published? No, I, I said, yeah, I said something in a podcast that was recorded at one time that was recorded for a private person, okay. not to be published. Do you recall participating in a podcast with Christine Burton on July 5th? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and you know that that podcast has been broadcasted, correct? I do, yes, and I asked for that to be taken out when it was broadcast. Okay, do you, you haven't presented any evidence that you asked for that to be taken out, they'll have you. Right, that was a conversation. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, to move to admit what will be uh, Exhibit 1. Uh, can you play clip 1B? Oh, looks like we're having some issues with it. Do you still know how to run the system? No, this is a server. What's that? It was broadcasting it earlier. No, yeah, it might be your HD It was working. Sorry, Your Honor. Do I have it in the wrong one? No. Is it showing? It yeah, it was there? showing. And um, it was showing. It was working earlier because yeah. I could see yeah, what was on your screen. Is it prompting anything on your one? No, it's no. not. And before it didn't prompt anything, it just. Well, I want I need her to be able to see it. Um, do I want to try Shane's machine? 
Well, I don't, it doesn't have those. Do they turn off? That looks like it's off. Did they maybe auto turn Go to sleep? Go to sleep. Yeah, it's saying it's connected to the source. It's not reading the. Do you know how to get the PC project? I don't want to. I don't want. Let me just check and see if it reads a different computer. Should it be here? Should it be this one? Oh. All right, there we go. There's well, something. It's not working on mine. Maybe the Let's try one more time on Jones. This, this, oh, this looks like it's a different. Oh, this one? This is that one. Can we take that out? Is that. Oh, they have to be connected to that because that helps. Oh, okay. Can we just, can we just, can we just, yeah, just try one more time. Good. Apologies, Your Honor. We had this working a minute ago. He doesn't have the files. Let me copy into the. Let me copy into here. Okay, just, just one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to a different line of questioning, and we'll come back to that. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. So, so earlier you testified about this August 25th meeting that you mm -hmm. had with, uh, with Mr. Delin, and you, mm -hmm. in Exhibit A. And what's, what your council marked as Exhibit A mm -hmm. included text where you reached out to the board beforehand. Mm -hmm. This is a text that you sent to the board, correct? Yes, ma'am. And it was on August 25th, right? Yes. That's a time when you were still employed by Open Stories, correct? Yes. And in it, you say that you're, that you're upset about something that happened that day, correct? Yes. You don't mention anything else other than what happened that day. I don't know. I'd have to read it all. Why don't you go ahead and read the, the full text of that first message? Okay, I'm ready. Council, we're looking at clean tips exhibit A. Okay, the first text message. Go ahead and read it out loud. Me? Yes. I want you both to. I want you both to be aware that something was said to me in a Slack message just now that was not okay with me from John. I am going to discuss it with him today at 2.30 and we'll let you both know if it is resolved or not. If not, we will need to have a meeting as soon as possible. Thank you. And then later in the same line of text, you said that what you were concerned about was, and this is a quote, um, that, you're, that you felt that he was threatening your job title and implied pay. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You don't mention anything else about threats in that, in that text, do you? I don't know. I didn't read it, but I, right now, but mm -hmm. I can. No, you that's, want me to? that's okay. fine. Uh, Jen, Jen, we're ready. You're ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, was, was that the first time that you had ever contacted the board members about Mr. Delin? Yes. Um, okay, so let's go back to what we were asking about before. Um, so we had just moved to admit the clip 1B, please. Oh. It's supposed to be connected to the volume. Do you have a, a video player? Yeah. I'm sorry. Open. <laughs> the risks of using it, relying on technology. We're gonna, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to talking about this August 25th meeting. You don't have a video. Now, in your testimony, you claimed that you brought what's in this folder as Exhibit B with you to the meeting, correct? On um, the policy? Yes. Yes, ma'am. 
And I'll represent to you that that meeting was an hour and 45 minutes long. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, yeah. somewhere around there. <laughs> and also represent to you that you talked for two thirds of the time during that meeting. Does that sound accurate? I do not know. Okay. I haven't watched it. Okay. So you haven't, you haven't watched the, the meeting? No, ma'am. So you don't have a fresh recollection of what you actually discussed during that meeting? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and in preparing for today, you didn't think that it was important to review a meeting that you were relying on to show that that he had, that Mr. DeLynn had engaged in stalking behavior? Objection, Your Honor. Oh, we're here on a stalking injunction, not any issues pertaining to any kind of claims um, Mr. DeLynn may have against. Overruled, counsel. I think it's, it is relevant. Thank you. So you, did, you didn't think it was important to review a meeting that you were relying on as evidence for purposes of your stocking injunction? No, because I, I my story is the same. Well, I, I'll, I'll represent to you that I've reviewed the meeting and that we will admit it as evidence here. And I don't recall any discussion about any abuse during that meeting. Would that surprise you? No, because I didn't get to say what my claims were during that meeting because it was cut short. Okay. Because John wasn't supposed to be allowed to be at I, that meeting or talk at that meeting. I, I understand. I'm saying that you said that you were concerned about this meeting being disclosed publicly because of things that were said during that meeting. But, I, but would it surprise you that none of those things were actually mentioned during the meeting? I read this transcript of the meeting. Okay, so you have reviewed the meeting recently. Yeah, well, part of it. I would say the first 10 minutes. Okay. And, and in the transcript form. Okay, and, and anywhere in there, is there any discussion about your abuse? Um, that's fine. I'll look, I don't recall I'll withdraw that question. Let's, okay, I let's don't. move forward. And never prior to that meeting or during that meeting, did you make any mention of sexual harassment to the board? Isn't that correct? Correct. And at the beginning of the meeting, didn't they ask you whether it was okay for Mr. DeLynn to participate? Yes. And you agreed to that participation? Objection asked and answered. Overruled. Yes, eventually, yes, I did agree to it. And they, and they told you that they were videotaping the board meeting precisely so that they could refer to it if there was ever any question about what had occurred during the board meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. And I just want, with your, with your question earlier, did I watch it? I tried to. Um, so during this almost two hour meeting where you talked for most of it. Did you mention any concerns with Mr. DeLynn other than what had happened at the August 25th meeting? No, because of the way it was present, because of Clint Martin and the way it was conducted. I did not have time to do that. During the one hour and 45 minute call? Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And didn't, isn't it true that you actually went out of your way to tell the board that you had never had any other problems with Mr. DeLynn and that in fact you worked really well together and thought you made a great team? Yeah, at times we did. At times we did and at times we didn't. Your Honor, I'd like to admit as Exhibit 2 what will be marked, or uh, clip number 5, which will be marked as Exhibit 2. Any objection, counsel? I haven't seen the clip, so tell me a little bit about what it is. I know you're trying to get it out, but it what, is, what is it exactly? This is, this is um, part of what was provided to you yesterday. Yeah, you sent me hours worth of video, and I've right. seen a lot of it. But I've been this is, which this one? Is the board meeting. What's in this little, is it all the board meeting or just a small clip? It's just a small clip of the board meeting. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll reserve objection until I tell yeah, they get it up so again. I can see what it is. Okay, we can try again. Okay, welcome to you. Which I know one? Okay, so this would be clip number five. Oh. And this is uh, Respondent's Exhibit. I'd be curious to see. Oh. It. There we go. It's, okay. it's up. Okay, we're, we're in business. Go ahead and play it, please. Okay. I'd be curious to see get your reaction. Like, is this normal behavior? Um, no. I'm okay 
say no, it's not criminal behavior. Like, I've tried really hard to get to know him and be, like, observant and um, respectful of those because it is a very hard space to work in. And I don't want to bring more harm, if that makes sense. So I'm, I try not to. Um, and I believe that in normal circumstances, he does the same for me. That he, he tries, I see him trying, I see him, you know, thinking of the words he says before he says them, and things like that. Um, I don't see it being like a pattern that I see, it's just spontaneous, you know, something here, something there. Just like a normal person, you know, have a bad day or something to that effect. Um, Do you, have you enjoyed working with your stuff but overall? <laughs> yes. Um, do you, um, like, would your desire to be kind of more patch this up and keep going? Do you want to still keep working here or after this kind of thing? Does it just kind of sound the sound the mood and you're pretty much done anyway? No, I would like to continue working. I love my job. Like, I love what I do. I love the connections that I make. I love... I feel like John and I are really a team, and I think for the most part, John and I work really well together. Thank you. And this, this is a meeting that occurred on August 30th, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this was after all of the abuse disclosures and your, <clears throat> your testimony that you claimed that he disclosed your abuse mm -hmm. and that he sexually harassed you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you don't mention sexual harassment. You tell the board that you love working with John and that you make a great team. You said that after that meeting that you texted someone about asking John not to contact you. You haven't presented that text today. Do you have a copy of that text? Um, yes. Okay. I don't know if it is not in So there. would it surprise you then if the, if the board members were to testify that they didn't receive any requests for no contact from you before September 11th? Yes, it would because I asked them, um, I told them it was too hard for me, for him to talk to me or for me to work with him, that I wanted no contact, but um, they didn't have to pay me for those days. I would, I would not be paid, and, but it was too hard for me to have contact with him. And they said that was You're fine, fine that I could take the days okay. off. May I approach the witness? Yes. And council, just so that uh, we are sure that it's part of the record, uh, your uh, this clip that he just played is that respondents exhibit one, or um, yeah, it will be marked as respondents okay. exhibit one. And I apologize, Your Honor, some of the testimony that was given this morning was not in the stocking injunction or provided to us prior to prior to this. So there may be a couple of things that we didn't provide to the court yesterday, but we'll make sure that we get you copies and of them. Um, if I it's just you. yeah, I want to make sure that. Um, it's uh, marked and it's identified and it becomes part of the record. So uh, I did um, consider your objection counsel and I am going to uh, allow uh, respondents exhibit one into evidence. Your Honor, I would only, <coughs> I couldn't tell if it had been edited or cut. It was a compilation that's been edited. Okay, so it needs, to, uh, that is not the, mm -hmm. I kind of thought maybe it had been edited because it's pieced together like five, six different yeah. parts of the meeting into one clip to look like it's one clip. So my objection is that it looks like it's a compilation or that it looks like it was edited. And the, um, the court will note that it's a compilation. It's a shortened clip of an hour and 40 uh, some minute long got it. Uh, meeting. So I, I provided to you um, a document that at the top says, oh, this says text and email evidence. Do you recognize that? Mm -hmm. And this is something that you prepared, correct? I believe so. This is what you attached as evidence to your motion. Yeah, it's the same then, yes. 
I just note for the record that I have added some Bates numbers at the bottom to make it easier for us to discuss this document. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move that this be admitted as Exhibit 2. Any objection? Uh, no, Your Honor. It looks to be identical to what was attached to her okay. uh, request for stocking injunction. All right. So received. Okay. I want to point, I want to direct you to what is the first page of this exhibit. Okay. And on there, there's a date that says August 29th, 2022. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the date that you were still employed at Open Stories Foundation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this appears to be a text from you about work. Do you see that? Uh -huh. And who did, who did you send this to? Um, it looks like Clint, John, and Carrie. Okay. So you sent this text and included John in the text, correct? Yes, they had already started a group text. Okay. Um, and in, is this the text that you were referring to? You're in here, you're talking about things that sound similar to what you were saying you said during your, your conversation about not wanting to be contacted. Most likely. Okay, thank you. Um, now I want to go back to what we were talking about before we had the, the problems with the, with the, uh, TV. So I was about to, uh, I think, I don't think I moved to admit it, but I'll move to admit it now. I asked you questions about participating in a podcast dated July 5th, 2022 with Christine Burton, correct? That's the day of recording. Is that what you're saying? That, that, that's my understanding. Yes. Is that, is that consistent with your understanding? Mm -mm. No. When do you think you participated in that podcast? Um, it seemed earlier to me, June maybe. Okay. Um, but I could be wrong. Okay. But you do recall participating in the podcast? Yes. It was a podcast we were recording for his friend for their posterity. Um, and, and this is a podcast that was broadcast, correct? I was not aware of that. It was a private one we were recording only for his friend. It was not to be broadcast. But as the director of operations, you, you knew that it was going to be broadcast, correct? Not at the time of recording, no. But you knew that it was broadcasted? Yes, later. Okay. Let's go ahead and play. I'll move to admit that as respondents exhibit three. Any objection, counsel? Mm, no. Okay. It, it's admitted. Okay. Go ahead and play it. <laughs> Pass down through the patriarchy of the church that, you know, if you're abused or um, things happen to you, <laughs> you know, as a child, right. that you just forgive. You just, you just, you're, you're told to just forgive and, you know, think of eternity and, um, right. you know, that they stand up for the abuser. Right. <laughs> and not the victim. And so, um, yeah, I have some personal stories that way too. And so what you're saying is just touching me <laughs> by respect of you. Yeah. And then um, also that it just makes me sad. Okay. So in here, you tell Miss Miss Burton that you have personal stories about abuse within the church, correct? Mm -hmm. How is that? any different than what you claim Mr. Dillon said about you in the August 10th podcast? Because of the nature of what the podcast was about. Um, there's, that was just in my personal story. Like I didn't say it was me. I didn't say it was what it kind of connection I was making with her right there. It was kind of vague, but I still, had empathy for her. I was still feeling what she had gone through because I knew what the connection was. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit Respondents Exhibit 4. This is a clip of the video um, in which Ms. Camp uh, participated in the podcast with Mr. DeLynn. That's uh, clip number three. Any objection, counsel? Let's see what it is. Uh, stop. That is okay. That's not the one that. No. Hold on. 
Um, which one? Which what? one, Chet? I thought it was. Is that from your Mormon story? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was your number. honor. I thought it was court number. What's the I subject? It's the it's the one where you were on the podcast. And counsel, to be clear, the court is only going to consider evidence that has been formally admitted. Okay, I got it. Okay, sorry, I had, that was the wrong one. Let, let's play the correct one. And Jen, anything you want to add? No, I'm just excited that we're talking about it, and hopefully it will bring some change. Yeah, okay. And again, Jen, we know that, you know, this is personal to all of us, but we know that for you, this is a very personal um, issue as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm sad that this is the weekend I'm out of town, so I can't participate in this, but maybe next week if we have a, another another one, I can be there for that. Well, when you do your story, we'll be talking about the fact that you have personal experiences of abuse within a Mormon context. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So thanks for joining us. I know this mm -hmm. is hard stuff mm -hmm. to kind of relive. In some ways, it can be re-traumatizing, but also hopefully healing, as we hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's great. Okay. So is, is that what you're referring to when you say that he publicly outed you? Yeah, because that was a live podcast. And he did that with virtually identical language to the same language that you used in the exhibit that we just looked at, Respondents Exhibit Number 3. That's him talking with no consent to say those words. I, myself, in the other podcast was connecting with the other woman. I understand. Did you think that John had done that to purposely hurt you? I think he did it on purpose, yes, ma'am. And didn't you leave him a voicemail afterwards telling him that you didn't think that he did it on purpose and that you were okay with it? I don't recall. I know I left him a voicemail now, um, on my drive home. Um, I don't recall what I said on the voicemail. Now. Um, on my side, it went away as soon as I left it. Um, Your Honor, in the, thank you. Your Honor, I'll make to admit respondents exhibit number five. Any objections? I need to see what it is, Your Honor. Okay, with the previous, uh, with, let's make sure that the, the previous clip, that was, uh, was, that was number three? I think the, so. It was video three, exhibit four. Exhibit four, okay. That about's fine. And so I'm going no to, so I, so uh, you moved to admit Exhibit 4, and that was the previous uh, clip that he played. And so, uh, counsel, any objection? N not, not to that. Okay, no. so it's received. And then what are we calling this one? This would be Jen Camp's voice memo to John DeLynn on August 10, 2022. Respondent Exhibit number 5. So I'm having some thoughts as I'm journey home. I just wanted to kind of voice them to you. Um, but first, I just want to tell you that I am not in any way upset at you or feel any animosity towards you or am feeling, you know, hurt by you um, on purpose or anything like that. So I just want to let you know that first of all. Okay. Um, then you claimed that you told him that you didn't want him. He offered, you admit that he offered to take it out, correct? The mm -hmm. discussion about him referencing your personal experiences. Right. But you told, you testified that you didn't want him to take it out. Not if he was only going to take out his part of it. Okay. Um, I'm going to present to you, and I'm sorry, I don't have physical copies of this. This is going to be uh, item number 6443. Can you pull that up? What is it? Image 6443. And counsel, that is getting uh, pulled up uh, with respect to exhibit five. Any objection? No. Okay, before we receive it. Where did you keep the images, Jen? They, were, they should be in the same folder. Uh, it's, what's the name of it? It's image 6443. Um, that may have not gotten transferred. Let me see if I can get it. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. 
So uh, let's talk about the women's panel. When I say the women's panel, do you know what I'm referencing? Mm -hmm. This is the podcast that you testified about recording where it was just you and other women, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And you specifically discussed your abuse during during that panel, correct? Yes, ma'am. You went into specific details about it? I believe so. Yes. Um, did you... Did you ever ask John to watch it and provide you any sort of feedback about your performance on that podcast? He had texted, I believe, in the Slack thing, alluding to that he had, had watched it, which I did not know he was going to do. And so if he had watched it, I that's when I went up to him and said, did you watch it or did you just pop in, okay. like you said? So and he said he just popped in, he didn't watch it. Okay, so you so you knew that he had watched at least part of it. Whatever popped in for a moment means. And you didn't object and say you shouldn't have done that. I asked if he had watched my specific thing and he said no. And you, but you asked him for feedback? I asked if he had watched it and if he had, I was going, I wanted to hear his feedback. You have the we're, we're trying right now. Can you help us? Yeah, Your Honor, can I have just one minute? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where was it? They were on there. They should have all been in the same folder. I have all these folder. Sir, can I get another water? Thank you. Yeah, we can go from the email to this coming back to to this women women's panel podcast mm -hmm. where you specifically discussed your abuse as a child mm -hmm. going into specific details about what had happened mm -hmm. did you schedule for that uh, podcast to be aired I think there were many discussions about when it was going to be aired um, or if it was at all um, it went back and forth many many times because I didn't want anyone else to edit it, to watch it, and so I had to see if there was some way to edit it to still use it. Um, didn't you propose to send it in a text that you sent to Mr. Dillon proposing that it be aired? Sure. Okay. But there might have been, but that was if I could come up with something that worked. From it. And then after this August 10th podcast where you claimed that, that Mr. DeLynn outed you about mm -hmm. child abuse, mm -hmm. didn't you agree to be interviewed about your abuse on the 22nd? Yeah, I think that was already agreed. So you had planned the, before then to be interviewed prior to the August 10th date. Due to the complicated nature of converting an MP3 file into a video that can be published on YouTube in a video format, we've had to split the four hour audio into two parts. This completes part one. Please find part two of the Jen Camp versus John DeLynn uh, anti-stalking hearing from RFM Radio Free Morning.